Welcome to this week's message from Burwood United Methodist Church. I'm Tim Wood, the Supply Pastor, and today's message is about a troublesome passage of Scripture that a lot of scholars have debated about and tried to decipher the meaning of. But I'll let you decide what it means today as I offer some viewpoints that I've come up with. Uh, the scripture passage is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. And this starts off with uh, Jesus and his disciples heading over into Gentile country away from the Jewish area where they've been. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from those territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David, my daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But he didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away, she keeps shouting out after us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He replied, It is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then her daughter was healed. This ends the reading of the scripture. Let us pray. A woman was desperate to persuade the Lord Jesus to come to her daughter's aid. Her daughter was under a demon's control. She cried to Jesus to free her soul. Like her, we come to you in desperation, yet we also come in anticipation. As we worship in this holy place, we seek your mercy, we plead for your grace. The story recorded in today's scripture passage is, at the minimum, puzzling. At worst, it is troubling. Jesus actually denies a heartfelt request for mercy because of a woman's ethnicity. Then Jesus insults her. In the end, though, Jesus granted her the mercy she sought. Jesus told the Canaanite woman he would not grant her the mercy she wanted because he was sent to minister to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel, not to her people. Then Jesus used an analogy that compared the woman's people to dogs. It's as if Jesus said her people rank as dogs, at least compared to the Israelites. Yet Jesus ultimately gave the woman what she asked for, Jesus went from refusing to help her to granting her desire. Jesus praised her faith. Now, why would I preach on an unsettling story just as this one? Well, I saw it in the lectionary list of scriptures and decided I needed to preach it. To better explain why I'm preaching this, I will go back in time to my high school geometry class. The teacher said the purpose of his class was not necessarily to teach us geometry, but to teach us to think. This scripture encourages us to think, but unlike geometry problems, there is no certain solution. This is not a tidy story. It does not easily resolve itself. As puzzling as this story may be, though, there are some lessons to learn. They include the following. Persistent faith is powerful. All people may receive God's grace. Penitence is powerful. And Jesus listened. The story begins when Jesus and the disciples went to Tyre and Sidon after an encounter with the Pharisees. The scripture offers no explanation why they went there. They were in foreign territory. Jesus had left Jewish territory and invaded the world of the Canaanite woman. Israelites and Canaanites did not get along very well. When the Israelites occupied the promised land, they ran the Canaanites off of their land. To the Israelites, they were a different people of a different bloodline of a foreign race. News of Jesus' ministry traveled far and wide. The Canaanite woman heard the news about Jesus healing people and performing other miracles. Somehow she developed faith that this Jewish man could show her mercy. When she heard Jesus was in town, she acted. She had to be certain of her belief that Jesus could heal her demon-possessed daughter. That's because she was taking the risk by approaching Jesus. In that time and place, women did not openly speak to men in public. To Jesus and the disciples, she was a foreigner and was not welcome in public conversation. Yet the woman did not allow herself to be subject to these limitations. If the Canaanite woman was anything, she was persistent. Her determination was based on faith. 
In calling Jesus son of David, she is saying that she believes Jesus has power over demons, which represent supernatural evil. She's ahead of the disciples. Her plea was based on a firm faith. Despite being a Canaanite and therefore an unclean foreigner, she showed more insight into who Jesus was than the disciples did. Jesus did not respond to the woman at first. The disciples lost patience with her shouting. They asked Jesus to send her away, but Jesus let her continue to make her pleas for mercy. This raises one of the puzzling questions about this story. Jesus told the disciples that his mission was only to the people of Israel. That didn't include Canaanites. Therefore, Jesus would not show mercy on the woman's daughter. Yet why didn't Jesus send her away? If Jesus was not going to help her, why did he tolerate her screaming? The woman had every reason to give up. First, Jesus ignored her. Then he denied her request because of her ethnicity. Undaunted, she bowed before him. Now, not only had she proclaimed Jesus' status as king by word, but now she honored him with an action suitable for the presence of a king. Again, she called upon Jesus to show mercy. After the woman bowed to Jesus and made that other plea, he said, It is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to dogs. The dog analogy was an insult to the woman and her people. Jesus compared Gentiles to dogs. In those days, the Gentile family might have a house pet, but it was unusual for a Jewish family to have a house pet. Many dogs were strays who ran wild, foraged for food, and were a nuisance. Nonetheless, the woman persists. Maintaining her belief in Jesus as son of David, she pointed out that dogs eat the bread that falls off of the tables of their masters. She's fine with being a dog. If she can eat crumbs that have fallen off of the table, that's good enough for her. Essentially, she said that Jesus has so much power that there is enough power for the house of Israel and more than enough left over for her. She's not trying to interfere with Jesus' mission. She merely wants a crumb. She has the faith that even a crumb is powerful enough to defeat the demon that has possessed her daughter. Jesus praises her faith. This woman seems to understand what the members of the household of Israel have yet to grasp. Jesus is not just hope for Israel, but hope for the world. Jesus then granted her mercy on the basis of her faith. So here are some ideas and questions. If Jesus had no intention of showing mercy to a person who was not an Israelite, he would have sent the woman away immediately. A woman was not supposed to talk to a foreign man in public, much less scream at him. But Jesus continued to listen to her. He responded to her. He engaged with her. He allowed this marginalized person to have a voice. So was Jesus planning all along to show mercy? Did Jesus not speak truthfully when he said he was to minister only to the Israelites? Well, I don't believe Jesus ever lied. So did Jesus change his mind. The Bible has stories about God changing God's mind. God wanted to wipe out the Israelites after the Golden Calf Rebellion. However, Moses persuaded God not to do it. We believe that we can influence God. Otherwise, why would we pray? Of course, we pray for whatever is within God's will. There can be many different ways for God to answer a prayer and be within God's will. If Jesus changed his mind, it could indicate that Jesus had the capacity to learn. Before Jesus traveled to Tyre and Sidon, he had a typically unpleasant encounter with the Pharisees. The trip to Gentile country may have been an attempt to get away from the Pharisees. In that setting, Jesus learned how powerful the faith of a Gentile could be. Jesus extended his power beyond expectations. Once he learned this, he immediately showed mercy on the woman's daughter. Let's take another look at those four statements I mentioned earlier. Persistent faith is powerful. The Canaanite woman was persistent. She had persistence powered by faith. Let this encourage us when we feel the need to be persistent toward God. All people may receive God's grace. The Canaanite woman was in a vulnerable place in society. The demon possession of her daughter likely led people to shun her, yet she could receive God's mercy and grace. Penitence is powerful. The Canaanite woman knew her place in the hierarchy of faith. She didn't want to sit at the table even though she merited it. Crumbs were enough for her. Jesus listened. 
Jesus gave voice to one of the least of all people. He didn't run her off. He let her say what she wanted to say. He allowed her to bow to him and plead again. In doing so, Jesus empowered her to make one of the great statements of faith in the Bible. Finally, this story tells us that God's kingdom expands by crossing boundaries. Jesus expanded his boundaries to include the Canaanite woman. Are we called to expand our boundaries to do what God calls us to do? The disciples wanted to send her away. With great persistence, she continued to stay. With words, the woman dared to show what the disciples didn't know. She pleaded with Jesus face to face for a crumb to fall from the table of grace. Lord, we also seek just some small part of the grace that's free to every heart. Through this worship, your word has been revealed. Through your presence, so many hearts are healed. Help us, Lord, to move on to perfection, for only in you do we find direction. Amen. And I offer this benediction to you. We deserve less than the crumbs of grace. Nonetheless, God gives us a place, not below, but at the great table, where loving grace makes us able to love all people with no limitations, to take the grace of God to all the nations. Amen. Go in peace.